China doubles down on Uyghur crackdown. Beijing has massively upped security expenditures in Xinjiang, where it's reported to have detained ethnic Muslim minorities. An analysis of Chinese government budget by a U.S. think tank revealed that spending on security-related construction in Xinjiang rose by 213 percent in 2017. The spending pattern is consistent with the construction and operation of highly secure political re-education camps meant to detain Uyghurs. Mass disappearances of Uyghur minorities since 2017 likely resulted in imprisonment in these camps, where former detainees say they had to endure intense political and cultural indoctrination. But while prison spending increased by 94 percent, formal prosecution stagnated, indicating that many are detained without a trial or with minimal due process. China claims the institutions are vocational training centers, but figures show vocational spending in the same year actually decreased by 7 percent. The country's human rights record is set to be reviewed by the UN Human Rights Council, which is expected to focus on its treatment of minorities like Uyghurs and Tibetans. China's got eyes everywhere. Chinese censorship strikes again. This time, the Communist Party has decided to take down posters of Xi Jinping himself, and you might be wondering why. Apparently, people have been splashing ink on the president's face around the country. The movement spread as a way to support Dong Yaochong, a Chinese blogger who posted this live video online on July 4th. Lujiao 中国共产党对我实施的老控压迫我反对反对习近平朋友们我今天就扑摸他了she was heard loud and clear by the CCP, and a few hours later, she posted a picture of men wearing uniforms outside her door. That was her last tweet before her account was closed and she completely vanished. Radio Free Asia reports a Beijing artist who shared her video and expressed concerns about her safety and Dong's father were both detained and questioned before probably being put under house arrest. Meanwhile, it seems this woman's actions have inspired a lot of people around China. China can't even take an eye roll. A female reporter broke the Chinese internet when she rolled her eyes during China's annual parliament session Tuesday morning. As China's annual session of the country's legislature marched into week two, the often scripted media Q&A session proved too much for one journalist. When listening to a fellow reporter speak to a Chinese official, Yitzhai financial news reporter Liang Xiangyi was so unimpressed by the long-winded question that took some 40 seconds to ask. And here we go. Let's see it again. After her reaction was captured by China CCTV, the moment quickly spread across Chinese social media like wildfire. GIFs and videos inspired by Liang's epic eye roll flooded Chinese social media, but unfortunately they were all later deleted by China's censors. 
资产将如何的得到有效的监管，以防止国有企业资本的流失。Yang's name also ended up being one of the most censored terms on Chinese social media platform Weibo. Guess that's quite an accomplishment for a reporter. The original question was basically about how China is going to supervise overseas assets, but there appeared to be a really long and boring build-up before the reporter actually got to the question. China tests facial recognition on world's longest sea bridge. The People's Republic of China is about to get some face time by the truckloads. Some drivers on the new Hong Kong Zhuhai Bridge will undergo facial recognition, fingerprint analysis, and temperature-taking thermal scans as Beijing tries to quicken border crossings. This will only be used at one immigration lane initially. In Telefusion, the company behind it says it is 99.5 percent accurate. That bridge, Tomo Sapiens, is actually the longest of its kind in the world, measuring a whopping 39 kilometers. That includes the bridge itself, an underwater tunnel, and two artificial islands. According to the South China Morning Post, the technology will match the driver and car with pre-registered immigration data. Once cleared, the driver can move on. If you're a permanent resident of Hong Kong with a China travel permit, you'll be cleared to go with no need to present your papers. But you better not be a sleepy driver. Citing Chinese media, Reuters reports facial recognition technology will also be used to warn yawning drivers for safety. If they are found yawning three times, an alarm will go off. Something not to snooze about, though, is the bridge's price tag. According to Reuters, it cost over 15 billion dollars. Other reports suggest around 20 billion. That's like nearly half the price of the FIFA 19 Ultimate Edition. The South China Morning Post reports that cross-border bus and truck drivers will soon be subject to the checks, as their information is already held by Chinese authorities. Other private drivers could use the system in the future if they register their information beforehand. However, this is all just part of China's massive surveillance systems, many of which are designed by Chinese company Intellifusion. In Shenzhen, jaywalkers recognized by the same tech purportedly have had their faces blasted across massive LED screens and get a text informing them of their offense. In Beijing, some cops are wearing what the CSMP describes as a surround body camera with facial recognition technology. And in Zhengzhou, railway cops are reportedly wearing smart glasses with facial recognition technology to scope out suspects and those wanted by the law. Nearly all of this technology is run by artificial intelligence system and bots that are controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Nowhere is that more apparent than China's Xinjiang province, where the CCP reportedly uses AI to vet Muslims entering mosques and malls. But it's just not there. Forbes reports that China's AI system also blocks human rights activists and anti-corruption journalists from traveling. This trend of AI and mass surveillance systems seems like it's only going to continue, especially when China ramps up its social credit system in the coming years. China to use robotic birds to keep an eye on people across the country. The South China Morning Post reports China has started using bird-like drones to monitor everyday civilians. The Chinese government has reportedly sent the dove drones to at least five different provinces across China, especially to Xinjiang, which is home to a large Muslim population. These robotic doves look so authentic when they fly high in the sky that even real doves start flying with them. The South China Morning Post reports the robotic drone mimics the flapping motion of a dove and will be able to evade human detection. The robot doves may even be camouflaged with feathers to further distort radar signals. The interior of the robotic dove contains mechanisms such as a GPS antenna, a data link antenna, a battery, an HD camera, flapping mechanism, and a flight control system. The project, codenamed Dove, is being led by a team of researchers who conducted various experiments, such as flying the Dove drones over a flock of sheep who paid no attention to the drones above. One of the researchers of the project told the South China Morning Post, "Technology has the potential to be used not only for military purposes but also for disaster relief and emergency response." Chinese repression intensifies in Xinjiang. Uyghurs are a Turkic Muslim minority, primarily located in the Xinjiang province in western China. Since the arrival of a new regional party secretary from Tibet in 2016, they've been facing increasingly constraining measures. Authorities can arbitrarily send people to detention camps considered suspicious without charge or trial, displaying religious signs, having relatives abroad, 
or even speaking Chinese poorly, had been proved enough to set off the alarm bells. No official figures exist, but a recent report by the Jamestown Foundation estimates that at least several hundred thousand people are currently being held indefinitely. This goes alongside a mass high-tech surveillance program. Chinese authorities claim that the crackdown is only targeted against Islamic terrorism and separatism. However, repeated human rights violations have been reported by various NGOs. Chinese proper game show focuses on dictator Xi Jinping thought. China just dropped the bigliest game show of all time focused on the greatest man to ever walk this earth, Xi the Pooh Jinping. The show was called Studying Xi in the New Era and debuted on Hunan TV, China's second most watched channel. Using state-of-the-crap visuals and graphics, the CCP has been scheming up new ways to ram outdated propaganda down the throats of young Chinese. Each episode is 40 long minutes and pits three contestants against each other as they dive into the abortion of free thought to talk about Winnie the Pooh's theories and speeches. The first round forces contestants to answer five multiple choice questions about the awesomeness of Xi's policies. The two people with the highest scores proceed to the second round where they are subjected to Xi's speeches and must press a buzzer to get the opportunity to explain what they mean. The final round involves rambling for a minute and a half about who knows what. And what does the winner get? Who knows? Maybe a chance to become an unwilling organ donor? <laughs>